Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerSlyShop.com. I uh, got a new fly for you. Well, it's actually a twist on an old one. This is actually a twist on the goblin fly that, um, if you remember a while back, I tied a video with Alex Caliveris. He um, was a friend of mine that did some fishing with him. We caught a lot of fish. It was a really good video. Check it out if you get the time. Um, he showed how he ties his goblin. And I did a little tweaking on this one to... Um, I've been catching a ton of fish on it lately, but especially here the past two days, I was out fishing with it, and um, what was really working is it really imitates the crayfish color. There's a ton of crayfish in the water here right now. It's September. It's towards the end of the time to be using the crayfish, but there's a lot of little ones in the water, and uh, it just I was tearing them up. I caught ten two days ago and five yesterday and uh, didn't really even fish that long so it did real well um, downsizing is the biggest difference that I'm doing on this fly compared to the other one the hook is a Daiichi 1260 um, beadhead nymph hook it's got a nice little curve to it I, I really like using it the bead that I'm using uh, is 532 sec yeah sorry 532 gold bead um, we carry it all at the shop here then what I'm doing is I'm adding eyes to this one and the eyes on it instead of using a dumbbell eye I'm using bead chain eye bead chain medium black is what I'm using and as you see here the bead chain it comes in a big long chain there's a whole bunch of them there what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the end two beads off here with your scissors and uh, tie them on I already have some cut ahead of time I, usually when I get the pack of bead chain eyes, I'll take the whole bag and just cut them all and make my eyes ahead of time so I don't have to do it and waste time each time I want to cut one. I'm going to start it on top of the hook. What will happen is this will end up being a little bit of extra weight, not much because they're actually plastic, but it'll put it on the bottom of the hook where I want it to weigh the head down like a crayfish, weigh the tail end down I should say. And I'm just going to wrap it on, figure eight it, get it good and tight there, and uh, just, you know, make different patterns with it, figure eight it, go under it, twist it around it, whatever, just to get it in there tight so it doesn't spin around the hook. And then I'm going to come back behind with my thread. My thread, by the way, is a 140 denier wood duck keller. I'm going to just put a little bit of Loon UV flow in here. Just enough to hold that in place. And we'll hit this with my light. Sorry about covering that up there, but it always screws my camera up when I hit the light on there. So, hit that in place there to lock them in so they won't spin around the hook, you see. And the next thing we're going to do is put a tail on it. We're going to use um, Strung Marabou in the peach color. and just don't use very much this isn't a big fly it's actually a size 10 hook we're using but it's not it's not a big hook um, even for a size 10 and uh, we're just gonna pinch I don't really want it as long as I want it a little bit shorter than the length of the body so I'm gonna measure the length of the body I'll lay it on top and shorten it up a little bit and just tie it down make some good wraps and then we're gonna wrap it back right above about the the barb across from the barb on the hook and you see we got a nice little tail on there not real big this is a short fly I don't want I don't want my fish short striking and uh, missing fish because they're hitting the tail and not hitting the rest of the fly just gonna wrap that down get it all on there the next thing I'm gonna use is my medium UV polar chenille and the keller is copper okay the keller here on this polar chenille you can see it it doesn't come in real good here in focus but what it is it's, it's a copper keller mixed with a purple and uh, when you get it wet and it takes on the shape it really has the keller of a crayfish and it's it was just killing the fish for me this weekend the way I was fishing it just tie it down here and wrap it back to the mar to the marabou. The way I was fishing it was I was waiting it just a little bit with a split shot, and uh, I'm just going to wrap this forward. Continue, always peeling the the fibers back. 
But like I was saying, I was fishing it and with a split shot, just enough to weight it down. It's uh, September, the water's still a little bit low, it's starting to get cool, so it's good enough to fish now. But um, the water's low and slow, so I didn't take much weight to, to sink me down to the bottom quick. I wanted, I cast it out, I would let it sink as close as I could to the bottom, and then I stripped it back. And uh, just short strips, just like four, you know, four or five inch strips with your hands through your line, through your fingers there. And uh, strip it back pretty quickly, but just like you're stripping a streamer, you know, down and across. I fished it upstream too and, and stripped it back and it worked. It didn't really seem to matter as long as I was stripping it and giving it movement. And that stripping would make it just dart through the water. Um, now that I'm up here to the head, I'm going to wrap it the whole way up to the head, and what I want to do is I want to take one or two wraps around the eyes, and I'm just going to, like, figure eight over, over the eyes there, and make a little bit of a head with it, and I'm going to come back up in front. You see how I went underneath it? I'm going to come right up under that eye. That's going to be my tie-off point. I'm going to tie this off right behind a bead. And you saw I, I kept the bead pretty, my bead chain eyes, I should say, pretty close up to the bead there. So I don't have too big of a head. I, I want I want this all to flow nice and well. Now I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm going to peel all these fibers back. And I'm going to finish wrapping this down. You, you see how I peeled it all back and got it all right behind the eyes, trying to get all them fibers behind the eyes. And then I'm just going to figure it into place and come up front here and whip finish right behind the bead. It's a really simple, really quick fly. Um, I fished this in the spring, except I wasn't fishing this calorie in the spring. I nymph it a lot in the springtime, and uh, but when I'm fishing it in the spring, I fish it a lot in silver and uh, gold. Those are the two colors I mainly use and I, I fish it as a minnow imitation. And one second here. S just do two wet finishes, snip your line off and uh, we'll hit it with some cement and we're done. But you can see how this all peels back and when you you get this wet it takes on like a minnow a minnow shape. But when it's in the, in the water these all these here just tend to fly around in the water and stuff and give it a lot of action it was really really working like I said I'm pretty sure they were keying on it as a crayfish imitation so that's all I do for this this is uh, just a variation on the goblin I was calling it the goblin crawl because you know I was imitating a crawfish with it but um, like I said I also tied in silver and gold colors too so don't be afraid to mess around with the different colors it works really well and just about anything I used it in. Also, uh, I'll show you a picture here of a nice fish I caught on it. This was working and then it stopped working so I switched it to a silver color. When I switched it to the silver color I almost instantly caught a fish on it. So just switch colors. When they stop hitting on one thing, switch colors. That's why I always like to carry a, a different, you know, a couple different ones of each color in it. Worked really well. Thanks again for watching. All the stuff you find on this video, all the materials for it, we carry in the shop. Give us a look at wholesingersflyshop.com. Don't forget to look us up on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sean Holsinger. Mm -hmm.